President Putin succeeds in his stated goal of toppling Ukraine's democratically elected government, the human rights and humanitarian crises will only get worse. Look at Crimea, where Russian's occupation has come with extrajudicial killings, enforced disappearances, torture, arbitrary detention, the persecution of ethnic and religious minorities, the brutal repression of dissent. The Kremlin is also ramping up its repression within Russia, where, even before the invasion, it was shuttering human rights organizations and harassing, poisoning, and imprisoning anti-corruption activists and political opponents. Authorities reportedly have detained thousands of Russians peacefully protesting the invasions, as well as journalists covering the demonstrations. Russian officials issued a warning to the country's press that any reporting that refers to the assault as, quote, an attack, an invasion, or a declaration of war, end quote, in other words, that tells the truth, will result in media outlets being blocked and fined. And Russia's prosecutor's office said that any Russian who assists a foreign country, foreign organization, or international organization during its so-called operation may be imprisoned for up to 20 years. We must condemn, firmly and unequivocally, Russia's attempt to topple a democratically elected government and its gross human rights abuses and violations of international humanitarian law. And we must take steps to hold the perpetrators accountable. This Council's decision to hold an urgent debate on the crisis in Ukraine is an important step toward ensuring documentation and accountability. I thank the many members who supported it. We must underscore Russia's obligation, even in its unlawful invasion, to respect international humanitarian law, including as it relates to the protection of civilians in the conflict.